Death or Valentis Written by David V. Mamina Narrated by Zach Mayo God did not abandon us children. We abandoned him in the land of wilted roses. Our forebearers made a profane covenant with fallen angels, pining to corrupt mankind, and their sins aligned in the land of wilted roses. There, God was cast out in place of unholy powers not suited for arrogant fools. Hubris ran afoul when mortals wagered our faith for misguided ambitions in the land of wilted roses. And now we are lost without him, our father, for he is gone, gone. And what do we have left but branded progeny and wilted roses from The Last Sin? Welcome to Mercia, Chapter 1 The Mercian Village Cemetery Love is blind, some say. Others would argue it's downright volatile. For the pair strolling up the graveyard's misty hill, it was too soon to tell. All he knew was that she was rather fond of cemeteries, hauntingly tranquil as they were on cool mornings. Looking to capitalize on it, he brought his chrome camera and tripod. There was a charming spot up on the knoll through gravestones and old monuments where a crooked willow tree marked the perfect setting. On the way up, they couldn't help but notice someone beat them to it. His hands tucked into the pockets of a black peacoat, Valentus stood before the headstones of his parents. It had been well over a decade since his last homecoming, but Mercia was where he was born and raised. Flashes of his father's tutelage in the necromantic arts seemed to rush from his tombstone, nearly consumed by the overgrown lawn. His mother's, too, had fell victim to the groundkeeper's negligence. Much like the village itself, Mercia's necropolis had seen better days. The wary footsteps had caught up to him, but he didn't budge. Even after the amateur photographer cleared his throat meekly, Valentus cast his piercing green eyes somberly about the rest of the graveyard, noticing yet another empty beer bottle. Again, the waiting Mercian produced his best ahem <clears throat> as a soft squall moved through Valentus's unkempt black hair. Sighing, the necromancer finally uttered somberly into the cool wind. My mother said once that people often avoid graveyards because they scorn the thought of death victorious. I always found that odd. Why have such places if not to keep them, or at the very least, pay them the courtesy of a visit? Left dazed by the stranger's intense expression, he soon replied, Uh, so, right, we were hoping to take a photograph here, if you don't mind. Valentus tilted his head to the side, barely making them out in his peripherals. A photograph? Why? Why? Well, we fancied this picturesque tree for a... You fancied? Valentus turned about to meet eyes with them, his jaw partly concealed by his coat's high collar. The cold stare took them aback. Is this why you trudged all this way to disturb me? To take a picture of a tree? She squeezed his arm in dread, signaling that she wanted to leave. Valentus's face appeared pale, as if lacking any blood in his body. But the striking green of his eyes arrested them nonetheless. If not for his look of disdain, the necromancer's handsome face would have enchanted them. Instead, they sensed a bitter hatred that wasn't at all shy. The man winced for a moment, but felt he should defend his decision in front of his date. It always caught my fancy, yes. I thought she would rather enjoy a picture here is all. We shouldn't have disturbed you. After noticing the two graves at his feet, the photographer changed his demeanor. Were they someone dear to you? Partially turning back to gaze upon the headstones of his parents again, Valentus softened his tone, saying, this was once a quaint little town. You're probably too young to have known. My father was the forge mason back when, when things were different. 
Now here I stand in an accursed shadow of what Mercia used to be. Pitiful. Moving to leave him to his sulking, the girl pulled on her boyfriend's arm in the hopes of walking elsewhere. He obliged and started backward, but not before saying, We will leave you then, sir. We're out of towners anyway. Well, you're not like the others I've seen here. Your polite candor gives you away. At any rate, you came innocently with some semblance of respect. Valentis then caught a glimpse of a drunken beggar following the visitors up the hill, stumbling as he came. And then there's pathetic rubbish like that. The pair about faced to see him staggering towards them, grumbling. Picking up the tripod and holding it close to his chest, he said in disgust, Oh, that man. He wouldn't stop harassing us on Main Street for change. Let's be off, darling. We could take 100 pictures of you anywhere in this yard, and each could be hung up in the galley. As they started off, Valentis glowered at the pauper and clenched his fist. He spoke to himself, though loud enough for the pair to hear. It was a mistake to return home. I should have stayed away. The drunkard called out to the fleeing pair in a raspy mumble when Valentis had a nefarious thought. His eyes mirrored the stark determination in his heart. Leaving his parents to lie in peace, he headed for the wretched man and declared, No, I came back for a purpose. My home will not rot like the hundreds of corpses underfoot. Mercia will be reformed, and I shall be the one to reform it. Coming upon the drunkard, surprising him, Valentis seized his head and growled in an imposing, ethereal voice, Starting with you! A glowing green energy passed into the man's body, replacing his eye sockets, nostrils, and mouth, compelling him to scream horribly. The pair bore witness to the horrifying spectacle and ran down the knoll in a panic. In but seconds, Valentis slayed his victim and replaced his life with something else. His corporal form held his soul no longer, for the necromancer forged a new minion. Grumbles of an inebriated stupor had turned to groans of complete obedience to his master. And while the photographer rolled down the hill with his camera flying, Valentis was just beginning. Raising his arms out to the side, he summoned forth the hundreds of corpses underfoot. Like a ripple in a still lake, his power spread throughout the cemetery, awakening new undead minions. He shouted with a booming voice that echoed about Mercia. Awaken all you who must live by my command. Come forth and answer me now. From unmarked graves to fresh mounds, corpses clawed and broke the surface of their earthy sleep. Some decayed to putrid skeletons, and others, in varying stages of decomposition, they all rose in droves. With green, glowing, cavernous eyes, they groaned and hissed somehow rising to their feet as the rules of nature no longer applied. Resurrecting scores of the dead was something only possible with his father's tuning blades, but Valentus had perfected his craft. He no longer needed instruments to carry out his will. The people on Main Street who saw the undead wave descend the hill first looked on in horror before running off screaming. What little traffic the morning wrought had come to a dead halt. Three carriages were nearly yanked off the road due to spooked horses. Pandemonium ensued, and in the center of it, Valentus ambled down towards them. Village authorities, petrified by the nightmare unraveling before their eyes, were helpless. As Mercia fell into chaos, a new member of Valentus's army bent down with degenerated joints and picked up an empty beer bottle near the picturesque willow tree shading the two headstones belonging to the necromancer's parents, undisturbed. A Vanguard in Mercia After thirteen days of Valentis, Mercia had become a very different place, transformed from what it had ever been before. Whereas Main Street looked far cleaner in recent days, Carriages pulled by undead horses was something which the town had no prior experience. One particular carriage transported a woman of great significance. 
or so she seemed. When the car came to a halt, but two blocks away from the village hall, Alicent Vale exited to a full crowd. Her beauty made the living gawk. Bare leg first, as smooth as a sculpture, Alicent Vale stepped out onto the sidewalk. Long blonde hair cascaded down the sides of her alluring face and curled like that of a princess of old. Bearing the armored features of apparatus in copper and a bluish bronze, Alicent forced a soft smile and bowed her head slightly, the metal tiara staying put. Tending to her dark-colored skirt as she greeted the herald, she realized that even some undead creatures appeared sentient. His face grizzled, having been originally dead for months. The herald returned her polite gestures with a bow. Welcome to Mercy of Vanguard. Please allow me to escort you the rest of the way to Count Valentis, thereby giving you a brief tour of our pretty little town. Gentility aside, his breath smelled of death, and his voice was croakier than a career smoker. Of course, Sir Harold, that would be lovely, she replied guardedly as she followed him up the street. Like any other village square, people were busy at work cutting grass and sweeping the walkways. Groups sauntered up and down the block, some more graceful than others on account of swollen limbs and weathered bones. Stranger still were the inhabitants that seemed all too human. Amid her tour, a young woman cautiously approached from the side, holding her infant. When she curtsied to honor the guest from Apparatus City, she whispered in desperation, Please save us. Her eyes widened. Alicent whispered back while the herald rambled on. Friends are coming. The woman then watched her savior walk on with the procession of mercy and dead, reanimated to the horror of all who refused to flee their homes. Undead guards in full armor donning earned regalia from another time flanked the village steps as Alicent arrived. Once through the open doors, it became clear that Valentis was keen on redecorating. Crows had the run of the place, gaping at her from various makeshift perches as she went. More living residents occupied the lobby and offices than Main Street itself, until she entered the renovated courtroom. Green necronic torches illuminated the four walls, sustained by the new mayor's will. And there he sat, leaning lazily to one side on his ornate throne with a grail of Dorand wine. Most members of his court were former mayors, councilmen, political agents, and other public servants reanimated to serve his interests. They followed his commands and offered their expertise when queried, never defying him. One newly created minion stood beside him with tray in hand, waiting to receive his master's empty grail of red wine when finished, though Valentus savored every sip. A vanguard in Mercia, he proclaimed from his high seat. What a rare honor it is to see one so exalted care to visit our lowly village. Count Valentus, is it? Alicent reposted while passing the threshold. I regret that I didn't get to see Mercia before you defamed it. Valentus consumed the rest of his wine and placed it onto the waiting tray as he replied. But I disagree, Vanguard. Mercia is more alive than ever. Poor choice of words, I'd say, after desecrating these corpses. Alicent settled into the center of the hall, corralled by his many minions. The eternal residents of this village rested in peace before you tore them from the ground in front of their families. What sort of horror? And what do you claim to know or care about the people of Mercia, alive or dead? They were all forgotten anyway by your pompous city on the sea. At least I dared to mold this city in my hands while you let it fall through your fingers like dirt. Valentus's words resonated throughout the hall with a celestial fury. See here, this lad was a soused loser, begging for coins and scraps when I found him. Now he has a purpose. He's far better off in my care than the callous fates of apparatus and all its decadence. Alicent scolded him with finger-pointing, 
You killed that man. There's no justification for that. He was already dead. For what is life without hope? You weren't there when I saw the lack of... Done arguing, Allison charged a bright light in her fist before casting the radiant power across the hall and into the chest of the man's cadaver, freeing him from Valentus's influence. Instantly, his body fell limp to the floor, devoid of life. The loud clanging of the silver tray, coupled with the dancing grail, induced Valentus to jolt in his seat. He looked over the empty vessel of his former servant in awe. No gaping entrance wounds. No burn marks. More bewildered than vexed, he groaned. What did you do? Tilting her head, she answered. Rendered your power useless in that poor man's body. You haven't heard of me? I've been away for a while, he said through his teeth. Welcome back, she said. Now I don't suppose you'll do the right thing and surrender, will you? I'd rather not have to fight it out. Leaning forward, seething with rage, Valentus snarled. That makes one of us. The necromancer's eyes intensified upon his command. The entirety of the hall charged her in a flash, seeking to incapacitate the vanguard for their master. Alicent countered in haste, charging her divine light again, but all throughout her body. Exerting her stored energy with a cry, Alicent detonated a brilliant flash that propelled her undead aggressors away in every direction. They soared back, losing all their tethers to Valentus before they hit the ground. Even his necronic fires of the hall's sconces had extinguished. Opening her eyes after her spectacle had done its work, Alicent said in between breaths, You really haven't heard of me? Clenching his fists, Valentus fired back taken over by a desperate wrath. Whatever you are, I've grown weary of your tricks. A murder of crows, living and beyond, answered his call and rushed in to overwhelm the vanguard. Fifteen or more had swarmed in, snapping and picking at her. For those with green eyes, Alicent deactivated with but a flick of her sparkling fingers. The others, however, were loyal to a fault, willing to bleed her at the risk of their lives. Are these crows ravens? She blurted out while fighting them away. I have to admit, this is getting ridiculous. Valentus was absent from his throne, but his omniscient voice bellowed from everywhere. Then let me make it real for you. Amidst the flurry of crows, Alicent barely noticed the glass flask of fire coming straight for her. She dashed out of the way just rolling from the blaze bursting from shattered glass. The crows scattered about, while a brazen few continued to harass her, despite the sudden heat of the fire. And through the blaze came Valentus rushing forth. Alicent couldn't evade his charging elbow, hitting her like a battering ram and sending her backward. She cried out from the blow, nearly knocking all the breath from her lungs. Unrelenting, the necromancer brought a ferocity of punches and kicks she could hardly parry. As the blaze withered out, he found an opening and kicked her into the wall. Moving in to finish her, he cried furiously, You think you can steal my home from me? They'll need to send better than scum like you. Enough! Allison fired a torrent of light from her palms, encompassing him and everything else within the hall. Apart from blinding him, her uncanny power drained Valentus of his branded abilities. He held his arms out in front of him, but to no avail. There was nothing else his flying friends could do, as even they watched him helplessly come to terms with his diminished state. He had never felt so low, so broken. Upon falling to his knees, still staring at his futile hands, the necromancer finally experienced what he could only describe as fear. A flogging from Alicent's bronze bracelets pulled him dazed onto the floor. His crows cawed in a panic when the vanguard turned him over and began cuffing him at his back. All he could do was gnash his teeth and growl. From the doorway, a tactical force of apparatum soldiers poured in, 
ready to receive the rogue from their vanguard. By the authority granted to me by the esteemed Council of Architect Virtuosi, I, Vanguard Alicent Vale, hold you in violation of the Branded Allies Act. Spare me your senseless jog and horse shit, you rank cur, he shouted defiant. You doomed yourself, Alicent Vale. I won't surrender until I've had my vengeance on you. I'll carve my initials into your flesh and make you my favorite slave. Your powers will save you only for so long. Valentus proceeded to curse and scream as the squad carried him out of the hall, leaving the victorious vanguard there to gather herself after the bizarre ordeal. He only quieted when he bore witness to the stillness of Main Street, hosting only the living. In such a short time, his impulsive coup of Mercia was thwarted, and Alicent Vale's name was burned into his mind. Thaddeus's Log of Essential Terms Number 1. Branded. Brands. People born with unique abilities, some bizarre and others extremely dangerous, tied to the rebellious events of The Last Sin. Number 2. The Last Sin. Controversial event taking place centuries ago when a radical group of clerics made a pact with fallen angels to obtain their many powers in exchange for no longer worshipping or needing God, the heavens. Number 3. Vanguard. Branded agents who work in apparatus's interest to police brands that have gone rogue. 